Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another day in my life where I've received some mystery boots and I'm gonna open them up right now and find out what's inside. So th these are gonna be from my friend Mario in Canada and his cobbler, Pablo, at DMAR Shoe Repair. Mario has been uh, kind enough to send me some boots to review and to talk about. So this is more than just any old pair of mystery boots right here. These are his babies. He told me to be careful with these, so I will. So this is the first time I'm getting to see and handle the infamous John Lofgren boots. John Lofgren, made in Japan, John Lofgren bootmaker. Wow, look at that. Manufacturer of fine boots and shoes, made in Japan, LK014. The color is timber, the size is nine. Wow. Well, without further ado, whoa. Very velvety, smooth looking shoe bags right here. Wow. That is luxurious. This is like the royalty treatment right here. I really like the super soft navy flannel. In fact, it's not navy, it's more of a royal blue color with the gold embossed John Lofgren Made in Japan bootmaker logo there, as well as very nice drawstring in very luxurious, almost like a golden color drawstring. Without further ado, let's have a look at the boots. Whoa, that's phenomenal. Right off the top of my head, just by judging, these do look like a half size large for me. So the size nines would be a size, a half size too big for me. I could just tell by looking at them. Uh, the length is gonna be just a little too long for my foot type. Yeah, nine E. Okay, so they're gonna be a little bit longer, a little bit wider. I'm an eight and a half D in most boot brands. True to size, I'm a nine D. And these definitely seem to run a half size large. That's just judging by, by my eye, I'll, I'm probably gonna try them on. Just my thoughts off right off the bat. These look like an Iron Ranger. They've got a bulbous toe in the vamp here, but it's not as chunky or as sprung as the Iron Ranger. In fact, I have a pair of Iron Rangers right here that I could compare them to. All right, so here are some Iron Rangers in copper, rough and tough. Actually, these look to be about the same length. The Iron Rangers are eight and a half double E. Yeah, so these actually might fit. So yeah, the difference compared to the Iron Ranger is we've got a perforated cap toe. We've got a Vibram 700 full sole, nickel eyelets, three nickel speed hooks, very, very hardy. 360 degree Goodyear welt with a storm welt. Let's look at the other one, shall we? Yeah, I'm not sure what the leather is. It, it's it's definitely a waxy type of a chrome tanned. I could tell that much. It might be brown chrome XL. Yeah, 9E. Yeah, these, these would definitely be a little big for me. But yeah, let me compare these to the Iron Rangers. Uh, they're, yeah, maybe a little longer. See, the Iron Rangers, the heel to toe distance is difficult to compare because on the John Lofgren's, we've got a curvature here on the back heel state, whereas on the Iron Rangers, it's straight up, basically. It's basically a straight board, barely any curvature back there. And so it's kind of hard to compare heels from that respect. But I think the Iron Rangers are just a half size shorter, just judging by my eye. Now I'll be able to tell once I put them on. I'm pretty sure that the Iron Rangers are a half size shorter. But th these builds are very, very similar. The Iron Rangers are a little taller and the Iron Rangers have an unfinished edges at the shaft, whereas John Lofgren has a rolled edge at the shaft and it's got a back heel strip similar to how Truman's started to do their back heel strip on their Ruggine. Yeah, so this is an unconventional back heel strip but Truman started doing this on their Rogine. Now this is gonna be very similar. It's not the same, obviously. It's gonna be a little different. On the Truman's, it's, it's got a lot more curvaceousness happening. On the Lofgren's, it starts out narrow at the base, widens out at about the ankle, and tapers back out towards the top. 
Whereas on the Trumans, it, it's sort of, it's like an hourglass. It's sort of wide and then it curves in, curves out, and curves back in again. So these Trumans, these are Trumans on the C55 last size 9D against the John Lofgren's in size 9E. Yeah, so the Lofgren's I think are definitely, if I were to order these, I'd order 8.5D. The Lofgren's, they're definitely much more rounded out towards the toe, whereas the Truman 55 is gonna be a lot more almond shaped towards the toe there. Yeah, Truman recommends going true to size on their 55 last. I could go true to size or a half down. If I went a half down, I think they would fit more similar to how Parkhurst boots fit at a half down. So yeah, I would basically say this is John Lofgren's take on an Iron Ranger. Very, very nice. A very high-end version of that. So these are known as the Combat Boots and Horween Leather Chrome Excel. They call it Timber. It looks like brown Chrome Excel, but it might be more of a British tan. I'm not exactly sure. John Lofgren Bootmaker Combat Boots are based on the US Army Type 2 Combat Boot, while faithfully reproducing such distinctive details as the unique toe caps and decorative broguing, our combat boots are also updated to meet the needs of contemporary life. We know the quartermaster board would have approved. Like all our footwear, the uppers are beautifully executed by a master Japanese craftsman that has been sewing our uppers from the very beginning. And of course, all our footwear is completely built in Japan. This is a lot number LK014, Horween Chrome Excel uppers, Goodyear welted construction using USA made storm welts. Yep. Single, double, triple, and quadruple stitched sewing. One and a half inch stacked heel, six inch shaft, Japanese made steel shanks. Made with USA Vibram 700 cork soles and 7335 cork heels. Embossed padded leather heel pad. It's an E or wide width. Built on the John Lofgren 120 last includes Japanese made John Lofgren bootmaker box and dust bags. So it looks like they do this same exact rendition in dark olive chrome excel, in black chrome excel. They've done these same combat boots in Shinki Haikaku. Okay, so one Reddit post says the guy went true to size, though most people size down a full size Brannock with John Lofgren. So on Freenote Cloth's website, John Lofgren's 120 last runs large. We recommend one size smaller than your size as measured on a Brannock device. If you do not know your Brannock size, we recommend one size smaller than your most common sneaker size, a half smaller than your Red Wing Iron Ranger size, 0.5 smaller than your Alden Berry last size, or the same size as your Viberg 2030 last size. Okay, I should be a size 8 Viberg 2030, and these 9Es, I could just tell. I could just definitely tell they're just too long for me. Sorry, I got kids playing in the background, so <laughs> please pardon my noise. The lav mic should help with that. One size smaller than Brannock. So yeah, I'm 9 Brannock, so that, that seems to line up. I wear 8.5 Alden Berry, 8.5 Red Wing Iron Ranger. Now the laundry's done. All right, so these retail for $890, so 900 bucks. Standard and Strange says, when John Lofgren sets out to build a pair of boots, he builds the most comfortable, highest quality boot he can. All of the work is done in Japan from start to finish using Horween, leather, Vibram soles, and John's own custom last. The combat boot is Lofgren's take on the classic cap toe military boot. The leather is Timber Chrome Excel from Horween, and the Vibram 705 sole plus 700 heel combination is the highest quality available today. The magic is in the fit. The last used for these fits a wide range of feet comfortably. When the Chrome XL leather breaks in, you can expect a glove-like fit. Choose one size smaller than your Brannock device size. Built on the John Lofgren 120 last, six inch height, four eyelet, three speed hooks, Goodyear welt, timber Chrome XL Horween leather, which I think is brown. American made brass eyelets and speed hooks. And yeah, so they had those in all of Chrome XL, which are, would be the ones I'd have been the most tempted by, and black Chrome XL. As far as the sizing goes, you know, I don't doubt that these guys are correct, because I can curve Viberg. You do need to size a full down from Brannock with Viberg. But Viberg service boots, half size large for me, size in the 2030 last, eight and a half D. Compare those to the John Lofgren in 9E. And I have to say these are maybe similar. I think 
If I were to order Lofgren's, I'd probably order the 8.5. The 2030 is definitely wider. I don't know, by my eye, the 9 and the 8.5 are about the same. So, I could make these 9Es work, but I do want to say they're just maybe a half size big, not a full size big. That's just my assessment. That's a visual assessment based on what I'm seeing right now. Viberg, 8.5, Lofgren, 9E. So just based off what I'm seeing, um, I would want to go a half size down from this, which would mean a half size down from this as well. So judging by that logic, me personally, if I were to order a pair of Lofgren, I'd probably go with the eight and halves, not the eights, just based on what I'm seeing here. Again, this is just a visual comparison. I haven't worn them. I'm an amateur, I'm just a dude who buys and, and looks at boots and gives my, as honest as an, of an assessment as I can give. And yet, even the, the heel on the Vibergs seems larger. You can see, I mean, the, the waist on the Lofgrens is more narrow in the 9 compared to compared to the waist on the Vibergs. It's definitely more generous fitting. I think these are about the same. I'd say these 9s are equivalent to these 8.5s. Now, the shape is different. The shape on the Lofgrens is going to be obviously more rounded out in the toe, but more tapered out in the waist, whereas the 2030 Vibergs is gonna also, it's gonna be wide in the waist, not as tapered as the Lofgren's, but also narrowed out at the toe there. That's my ruling at this case. Again, I don't have any experience with Lofgren at all. That's just my initial assessment. Probably, I'd probably go a half down, not a full down. That said, this is gonna be a structured toe, a lot more, a, a, an extra amount of room in the toe box there compared to the 2030 that toe box is you know, breaks down and collapses. You can see it's, this one's collapsed quite a bit. It's got a shoe tree in there though, so you can't see the collapse in full bloom, but it's there. Yeah, so I could I could see going a half down, not true to size. A full size down would work as well. It just be, might be a little tight. But then again, if you're trying to apply the stretch to fit model, which I don't always recommend, but you could, especially if it's a plain toe. Now with this cap toe, this reinforced cap toe, and it's a quadruple stitch down, that's, it's not going to stretch in this area. It'll stretch in this area, but not here. I am overall extremely impressed by this pair of boots. This is definitely an upgrade to the Iron Ranger. I'd say if you're looking for the best possible version of an Iron Ranger, you found it right here. This is the Iron Ranger on steroids. This is the King's version of the Iron Ranger. Again, the toe's not as sprung. I think it's a lot more elegant of a shape comparatively four eyelets, three speed hooks, flawless execution. All right, so anyways, that'll do it for now. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. What do you guys think about John Lofgren? Do you own any John Lofgren? What do you think about my sizing advice? Is it accurate? Would you consider a half down to be the best sizing or would you say the full size down? As always, all, in, all input is welcome. Follow Mario who these boots belong to. His, he, his username is Boot Reaper on Instagram. He's a boot addict like myself, loves boots. Mario, thank you so much for sending these to me, my friend. I'm very stoked to have these in my possession for a short time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take pictures of them. I'm gonna get some high res photos. So that'll do it for now. Thanks a lot for watching guys. You can follow me on Instagram. My username is LV. See y'all in my next video.